Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I bet you have patience with my accent, so if you have any hard time with my beautiful Spanish accent, you raise your hand and somebody with a more seasoned English will step in and, uh, and <laughs> clarify. Um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Also be patient with my Arabic, inshallah. Rabbi <laughs> Shahri. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassirli amri wa hlul uqdata min lisani yafqahu wa waqulli. Amin. My Lord, expand for me my breast with assurance and ease for me my task and untie the knot from my tongue that they may understand my speech. Amin. Um, first, I, I would like to ask who in this room has never grieved, has never felt pain? Just raise your hand. <laughs> I, I'm glad because whoever raises, what to raise his hand, I was going to say, you don't know what you've missed out on. Um, because the truth of the matter, right, that the depth that pain and grief take us to in our soul makes us so much more seasoned for life. And it's not that we call for pain, and it's not that we look for it, but in my opinion, nobody can be uh, as immense and as amazing as they are if they haven't really been through some, you know, uh, trials. And, and so we are in a good room, comfortable. We, <laughs> we all have our share, and I don't think, and I was thinking as I was preparing for this conference, um, SubhanAllah about the human body. And I was thinking if anybody has any doubt that we were created with, with it in plan, that we are to go through some heavy duty pains, you look at our body, right? All we all have in our eyes, two little holes, right, for a reason. So the saltiness of the soul can get to come out of there, right? Yaqub alayhi salam. The sadness of losing his son, what did it cost him? Blindness. There was some guy in Egypt, he wasn't, I, I understand he wasn't even a Muslim, but he had learned from the Quran. Uh, to, he started trying to treat a blindness. There's a specific blindness that is caused by sadness. There's not a specific that is not a birth blindness. And he started treating it with uh, a sweated uh, shirt, cloth, because when Ibrahim alayhi salam, right, put, he, uh, he requested uh, the shirt of his son, of, of uh, Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam, um, he put it over his face and, and slowly he recovered his sight. So let me also think, I know there are some people in this room that are far more qualified than me to be standing over here. We have some very experienced social workers. Uh, Brother Ismail, I see him on, on the corner. I see Sister Moira who have been working for many years for NIH as a, as a um, a therapy uh, providing sexual therapy currently and, on, on, and art therapy for wounded veterans. And I just want you also to give them a little round of applause because um, these are the people who are working, you know, in our communities and are large. And, and I just think that we should give them this recognition. The Imam who preceded me, um, I so much enjoy uh, his talk. And I just wanted to share the most favorite part of the seat of the Prophet which is when the Prophet uh, after he, you know, uh, had to leave Mecca, and he goes to the town of, of uh, uh, Taif. Is it correct pronunciation? Okay. And over there, he's hoping that he's going to find people, right, who um, welcome the deen and are open to receiving the deen. And what happened? They actually receive in the worst possible manner. And they plan, and they gather the children, and they gather, you know, the vagabonds to go after him and, and, and to chase him, basically. And they throw rocks at him. We all know this story, right? But that, what, what does that really mean to us? Because these stories, if we don't ponder upon them, right, we are losing a lot of, of, uh, of what they can give us. Sometimes I have been on the, the other day I went to Panera and I wanted to park and there was a lady there, right? And she was next to her car and she was, I thought she was going to come out. I rolled down my window, I smiled at her and I said, are you leaving? And she's like, well, don't you think I'm waiting for my mom? She was so upset and angry. <laughs> I said, okay, 
you have issues. <laughs> I didn't say it, but you put down my window. That really uh, affected me, yeah, right? The rudeness of one human being who doesn't know me. And who am I, you know? Imagine the Prophet Sallallahu Imagine children, because I, you know, I grown up, but children throwing rocks at you. What was the Prophet uh, reaction to that? It was a dua, one of the most beautiful duas, right? I think any of us, with far less than that, who have internalized, and this is a term that I want to uh, bring to this uh, presentation, which is the term of internalized oppression. And I think it's very relevant for our communities to think about this, and, and I really tie it to this specific point of, uh, of the life of the Prophet Sallallahu because at that point, he, he really, you know, had internalized that oppression, he would have probably run away, right, from, from this. If we were to internalize the oppression that always comes through, you know, our TVs or from the environment that we are in, and we don't go back and ground ourselves, right, in what, um, in the connection of what, who we really are, right? We are not what people say of us. We are not what people think of us, right? We are not how people perceive us. Who are we, right? We are the servants of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, right? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did he, he made dua to Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala? He said, yeah, my Lord, uh, relieve this from me. And if this is from my own self, then, you know, he just wanted to make sure this is not from my own, right? Um, from my own self. And then I can continue uh, going. I'm not so seasoned of a speaker as <laughs> the previous one. I have some good thoughts, but the process of putting them into wording, I'm still learning, especially in public. Um, I also wanted to talk about risk. We all, all, often we think about risk as um, money, right, or material blessings. We don't think much, or do not talk much ab about risk. We don't talk about risk in terms of knowledge, depth, right? A, um, understanding, and when calamities strike, right, there is something that is happening. There is something that is happening at a different level, and all we can perceive at the moment is the loss, right? I lost my child, you know, I lost a spouse, I lost my house, I lost my job. Any degree, right, of the many, many, the myriad of, de of degrees of losses that we could face in this world. But we don't think, or we don't realize what that loss may represent, right, in terms of what we are gaining through it. There are many types of uh, loss and many types of grief. And one thing that I want also to talk uh, about, I want to refer back, back, and I want to talk about one specific kind of loss, and in my opinion, it's probably the most dangerous one. And when we think about shaitan, what is it that really happened to shaitan? It's the loss of privilege. I think when something is taken from our lives, right, a child, a person, we know this is taken from Allah SWT. We know that it's something and we have to find ways to deal with it. But one law that I find very tricky is the, tr the loss of privilege and how challenging and testing that loss is. And I just want to refer back right to the story of, of, of Shaitan. Uh, we often think, well, he just disobeyed Allah SWT. I mean, if you really think about it, the petition wasn't a big deal. I mean, Allah Allah ask a lot of things, clear commands to us, from us every day, and who here obeys all of them? Well, I don't. I try, but I don't. So if you really think about it, you have to bow down to one man, right? I mean, that big of a deal? It was a very big deal. Now, why was that? Because, I mean, really, if we look in terms of shaitan, was it really about bowing down to, to Adam, alayhi salam? Was it really about that? What was he really about? He was upset. He was upset about losing his privilege. And that, that loss, right, made him disobey his Lord. Now, what lays in that disobedience? You, are we thinking together here? Okay. So when, you diso when he disobeyed Allah SWT, what did that really mean? I mean, Allah SWT, he, he was cursed for life. You're like, wow. First of all, he was given a privilege. He was given a privilege. He was at the level of the angels. He was at the level of those who don't have choice. He, the only, you know, so you could say that he was the perfect worshiper, right? 
How often do we find that in a community, the people who think they are the perfect worshipers, per worshipers, right? And sometimes they are the most intolerant and the more judgmental, etc., etc. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all, you know, improve our communities. So he went from being in the hierarchy of the hierarchy, right, to disobeying his Lord. The bottom line of that, he did not acknowledge that everything that he had was given by his Lord, right? And in the same sense, everything that we have and everything that we are, what is it? It is a privilege, right? Our children, our sons, or our, 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 you know, our jobs, it's, it's all privilege. So how are we going to deal with the loss of privilege when we are tested? And what we are told, there is a dua that the Imam mentioned before. What do we say when we face loss? In Allah, in Rajaun. What does that really mean, right? He explained it. But I would also like to add to that. What the, our understanding is, it means to Allah we belong and to him we shall return. Some people come and when you have a loss, they may tell you this, right? And it almost has that taste of, they are telling you you're not good enough of a believer, you know? Like, how come you are not patient to, of, you know, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How come you're not patient if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you? To give it to you to begin with, right? You know what, you can tell me whatever you want, but I miss this person like crazy, right? And this hurt is physical. Emotions are physical, right? They are energy. You can tell me this is not real. So what does that really mean? Is it the last one that I'm telling, be grateful to me right now that you are like dying right now and you just want to kill yourself? Is that what the last one that is telling us? No. Because I tell you, it's even a mercy from this thing that Allah has forbidden suicide. Because I bet you there is more than one of us in the room but I wanted to, at one point, thought about it. And what kept us alive? That forbidden. Because sometimes the challenges we face are far above what nobody can understand what any of you and any of us have gone through. Nobody can understand it. In the moment of pain, no one can really understand who's the only one who can. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because he's the one who created our soul. He's the one who created that very capacity of pain. He's the one who created that very capacity of joy. It's interesting how in uh, Chinese medicine, which in my opinion is far more comprehensive and close to our thing than this mainstream, like money-making, Western approach medicine, right? They uh, associate parts of the body with um, specific emotions or with specific, right? They associate the lungs with grief, the heart with joy. They associate uh, the kidneys with, with, with grieving. Uh, no, I forgot right now. I can't tell you later, you come to me and I don't want to waste my time in Chinese maze right now. Um, and I was thinking, SubhanAllah, where is the seat of the soul? In the heart. And the believer should be joyful, right? And then we have what? The liver. It's the one organ that Allah Subhanahu created that actually um, regenerates itself. What is amazing, if you really think of it, the one organ that is associated with emotions. Anger has to do, right, with the liver. Sadness has to do with the liver. And the liver is surrounding the heart. And look also, subhanAllah, how interesting it is that the liver, what does the liver do for the body? It, it purifies the body. The whole blood of the body goes through the liver, purifying it. And what does that also tell, tell us in terms of emotions, right? that we need to uh, cleanse our emotions. I want to talk really quickly about what I call the blueprint approach, which is something that I have, I'm kind of developing recently. Um, this life coach I was listening to on YouTube, he was talking about sadness and grief and depression. And he was saying, he was talking about a very famous person who she has it all basically, yes, she was very depressed. And then he's talking about what happens, what many times causes depression, is that the blueprint of how we think our life should be is not matching, right, our life. And because of that, it's constantly putting us in a state of sadness and a state of grief. And let's ponder upon that just for a moment, right? What is our blueprint? We live in this country and something happened. And you will see, when you often see poor people, right, aren't they a lot more content usually? Why is that? Because their blueprint, they don't expect much. This is what they have learned, you know, from humble environments. Usually, they, who are the most entitled people? 
the people who've had a lot, because their blueprint is very high, and then they are tested, right? Like Shaitan, he was very high, he had a lot. When he was to lose it, right, he acted out. Shaitan is a serious, serious case of anger management, <laughs> without a doubt, right? His issue was not really with Adam, alayhi salam. He's, he was acting out on Adam, alayhi salam, what? He sang with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was what really was happening. He was upset about his cadre. What can we say is our cadre? Well, let's say our cadre is a blueprint, right? Uh, we all understand the blueprint concept, right? So let's say our cadre is a blueprint. Now, and all of us have a different fingerprint, is that right? We all have a different cadre. So let's try not to measure ourselves by others. You are grieving, grieve. And grieve however that looks like to you. And surround yourself by people who will support you in that. And, and go away from communities and from places where that is not happening and it's not facilitating that for you. Go away from places where you're ashamed. Go away from places where you are judged and heal, right? However that healing looks to you. Um, thank you. Okay. So I already mentioned about what I think is the most dangerous loss. And, 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 and I just want to throw the thoughts out there for you, inshallah, all to go home and, and ponder a little bit about that. And I also want to make a call for compassion in our communities, right? Sometimes when we have lost, people tell us, be patient, right? Be grateful to Allah. Let's do a little exercise right now. Now, I want each one of you to think about something you're really, really grateful for. Like think you. Think it, really think it right now. Close your eyes if you have to. You don't close your eyes. Think about it. Think about that and feel it. Feel the gratefulness. SubhanAllah. I'm sure you're going to find many, many things. And I'm sure there's a lot of pain in this room. <laughs> right? What a wonderful way to exercise gratitude. It will bring tears to our eyes. So. Co try also to compensate, take care of our heart, because shaitan wants us, wants us uh, grieving. Shaitan wants us upset, yeah, right? Uh, Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah said that there are four ways that the jinn can take over a person's body. One of them is extreme anger, right? One of them uh, is extreme, um, let me, no misquote, uh, extreme Okay, let me get my right notes. Extreme anger, extreme uh, sadness as well. Uh, he mentions, actually, he mentions all the two. Okay, extreme anger is the first one. Excessive fear, excessive heatlessness, and too much given to your desires. But two of them are emotions, right? And what is anger? The, the, the imam was talking about the girl who died because of an, uh, an overdose. Oftentimes, these addictions are only masked, you know, a grief, a grief that you didn't let it, you know, be, that didn't take its course, right? And then you start numbing yourself you, because you haven't dealt with it. A lot of anger is that too, oftentimes, right? It is untreated grief. Oftentimes we grow up in, in abusive house, households or we are in abusive marriages, right? And there is something that happens to the body when you are in that flight or fight mode all the time, that the chemicals of your brain, they actually change. So, but that can be, but that, they can be transformed for as long as there is knowledge and there is um, awareness of, of that. Um, I don't think it have, we don't have much time left. Um, I just would like to finish um, saying, um, be patient with yourself. Be patient with yourself. Because not only are we not patient with others sometimes, the first one that we are not patient with is with ourselves. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, guide us to healing. We live in community with a lot of, you know, we come from trauma. We come from all over the world, from colonized countries. We inherit this in our genes, right? Sometimes we don't ponder upon that. And we deal with each other, right, in ignorance of that, you know? So um, we have amazing, amazing potential. Let's try to um, open ourselves every day to our blueprint, right? What is our blueprint? We don't know. Otherwise, we would know our color, right? So every day, any grief that comes our way, any sadness that comes, let's go back to inna lillahi wa inna leh rajan, which means what, you know? There is the one discomfort that there is no solution for in this world. 
in the discomfort of having been separated from our Lord to begin with. So, and this is where we are given the reminder, you will go back. Because we know there are people who are happily married, who have money, who have houses, who have, we know in Europe, and they commit suicide, you know, because you can have everything and not have, you know, that connection with your Lord, and you will be unhappy. Yeah, look, look at Ummah. You can lose everything, but your con you have your connection with Allah SWT, however strong or weak that may be, but it is there, and you have the acknowledgement of where you are going, right? And, the, and, and then you do have a life and you have a future, right? Inshallah. May Allah SWT, you know, forgive me all of you for any um, shortcomings in the presentation. I pray that it was uh, beneficial. And uh, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.